Welcome to another episode of GUI Challenges, where I build interfaces my way, and then I challenge you to do it your way. Because with our creative minds combined, we will find multiple ways to solve these interfaces and expand the diversity of our skills. And today we're looking at color, and we're specifically looking at the relative color syntax and what it can do, all of its features. I'm going to break down about 10 or 11. I didn't even count how many versions of like kind of handy ways that you can use relative syntax, but let's check them out in today's GUI Challenge. So here's our little demo site. This is what I've built to sort of showcase what is relative color syntax, a couple links like to the spec and to the can I use, and a, and a brief breakdown of like what it is. And so relative color syntax creates a new color from another color. You can break a color into variables, modify those variables, and return those edits and modifications for a newly defined color's values. This little image here, well, here, let's look at the large one. This is kind of showing you how it works. You say RGB, you can kind of pick a color space to work from. And I'll just start with RGB since a lot of y'all are familiar with that. We're going to make a new RGB color from this named color of green. And what the browser is going to do and what the syntax does is it breaks this green down into RGB values, passes those values up and over into here for you to use as well as alpha with the slash. So this is pretty much like if we got rid of from and green, we're defining a new color RGB, you know, we've R, G and B, we can put numbers here. We can also, well, you'll see, we could put whatever number we want here and we don't have to use the variable, but then the slash syntax allows us to optionally pass alpha. So you don't have to use RGB any A anymore. You just use RGB. And so that's the sort of semantics of the um, effect here. And we're going to use that to do all sorts of really cool color modifications. So let's also check out, can I use, we can see it's already in Safari. Chrome, I'm in Canary right now with the experiments turned on. So here I've got the experimental web platform features. You go to Chrome colon slash slash flags and you can find this and you enable it and you can go test this out in Canary today. It is set to ship though in 118. You can kind of see that here with the little green flag. So that's the next stable version of Chrome is going to have relative color syntax. And this is a very, very powerful way to work with color. So let's check back at our demo and look at all the different kind of use cases that I've outlined here. And so I've got one right here. This is just, well, let's, let's twirl it open. Let's twirl open all of them and just go through each of these one by one. So right here we have the basics, and this is very similar to the uh, image that we've already seen, but this says, okay, LCH from hex code, a hex of yellow, LCH. So really all that this does is this converts from hex to okay, LCH and does no transformations to it. So this is sort of just extracting and converting a color. And it might seem a little useless at first because, um, you know, just a straight conversion doesn't really do anything. But this is a great introduction to the syntax since everything's very minimal. Notice I didn't pass any alpha and I'm just showing that you can make a color from another color, especially like a hex color. And we'll do modifications to this, like lighten it or darken it. There's all sorts of cool things. And so those are the ba basics here where we're just doing color space conversion. Over here, we're just showing that it can work with custom properties. So I've got an OK Lab new color being uh, extracted from a variable that's called cyan and that just so happens to be holding a value of cyan. And this can be an RGB, it can be an hex, it can be an OKLCH. It doesn't matter what color space this variable is in, it's going to get broken down and converted into OK Lab and then LAB come back for us for use. And this is kind of cool just to show that it works with custom properties. I think it might even work best with custom properties. Did I say that here? Yeah, it's, it's never been more useful because if you've got like a brand color, this works out really well. And yeah, there's the statement. It might even be best with custom properties. Okay, so we've gone over the basics. We've gone over that it works with custom properties. And now we can kind of get into these other pieces. So let's close these out since we know what they mean now. All right, so this one says do math on the pieces with calc. So if I focus in on this one, we can see I'm passing in lime. I'm making an HSL color from lime. And notice how it's pink. The output of this color is pink. And that's because I've taken the H value and subtracted 180, like 180 degrees. This is like doing a full 180 turn on the hue, which kind of gives us the complement. And so you can see that then I just pass, pass in S and L as they were. So I'm not changing the saturation. I'm not changing the lightness. All I'm doing is rotating the hue with a calc on one of those variables that we get in here. 
And so this finds the color in the opposite side of the wheel because we basically spun the hue by 180 degrees. You also have access to other functions. So it's not just calc. You can use clamp, min, max, sine, cosine, et cetera. All these different mathematical functions that allow you to kind of compute in CSS, they work here inside of these color um, functions, which is super cool. And so that is, you can do pieces, uh, do math on the pieces with calc, and we'll go into even more ways that that becomes useful. So then here, access an alpha channel value. So let's say we've got a you know semi-transparent yellow, so it's already kind of transparent. We can make a new LCH color from that. So we just take LC and H, so we're not changing the color itself. But look at this, we do slash calc alpha divided by two. So we cut the alpha in half of whatever it currently is. So like if it's 50% transparent, we are now making a 25 percent transparent yellow. And this could be nice for hover effects, maybe for shadows, things like that. But just the idea that you can take any color and give it alpha or modify the alpha is super valuable. So you can think of like a brand color and you need to make like a, a kind of cool hover highlight that like bursts out uh, out from the button or something, um, which is something I, I do all the time in my UI. But anyway, you can make it semi-transparent based on a brand color really easy just by changing the alpha with the relative color syntax. And so, yep, here I just cut the opacity in half, relatively adjusting op uh, the opacity. So the relative change there is what's key. It's relative because I used whatever its current alpha was. Then uh, later you're going to see I make some absolute changes where you don't have to use calc alpha. You could just throw away alpha entirely, do slash 50% and just make a 50% version of yellow. So it throws away the yellow that was, or the transparency that was on this transparent yellow and just absolutely sets a new one. So you have the option to use relative transformations or absolute transformations. And I find that distinguishing kind of idea to be really, really valuable as we move forward. Okay, so you have access to channel values and calc works on them and it works with custom properties. Super cool stuff. What else do we got here? Well, like I was saying, you can uh, make an absolute change, right? I call this an absolute change versus a relative change, where a relative change would have taken into consideration the value of the variable. And in this case here, we take transparent yellow. And look, it's just like I was saying, we pass in a new alpha for the alpha channel. So we, uh, you can do that with any of these channel values too. So you can throw away the lightness and just put a number here, put a number in the chroma, put a number in the hue. Any valid value that goes into these channel values can be just thrown in here. And so you can partially use or fully use the extracted variables that you get from one of these colors. It's super cool. Oh, great. So that was an absolute change to pass an entirely new value. Let's look at how to desaturate a color with the relative color syntax. So we have HSL from magenta. We're taking hue, so we want to stay in the same hue. We're going to calc on S, the saturation, and we're going to divide it by two and then pass the L channel back in. So we've cut the saturation of this magenta color in half. And here's our result on the left. And that's pretty sweet. We just cut the saturation and you can also do this in chroma. It just depends on the color space that you choose. So there's multiple ways for you to change saturation, to change chroma. It just depends on which color space you chose from here. So here I chose HSL, which is going to give me the S value. But we could also use chroma here and just do our math on the C value and then uh, change the saturation that way. Chroma and saturation are not 100% interchangeable, so it might be worth testing out each to see which one you like the results of better. So that's desaturating a color with relative color syntax. Let's also look at desaturation by just setting a new value. So this is again like the absolute change. So I'm taking magenta, I'm saying hue and lightness, and then I'm just providing a new saturation value, 20%. So I think magenta has normally 100% uh, saturation. And I've said, well, I just want 25% of that. So instead of doing math on that value, I just pass in an entirely new saturation value and I get this nice little mauve. Kind of cool. Particularly effective in OKLCH and OKLab. And that's because the saturation of the chroma like to desaturate, they stay in that perceptually linear lightness. And so it's kind of nice to think about things that way. So do you desaturate relative or desaturate absolute? So we had a couple of examples of that with alpha and saturation now. Super cool. And here's another interesting one you can do. You can chroma boost. So normally we talk about colors like removing the saturation, but you could also add saturation or add chroma. So in this case, I'm taking a color from Lime, which is in the sRGB color space, which has a maximum amount of brightness that that color space can represent. I'm taking that color 
turning it into an OKLCH color and taking the chroma and boosting it up to 0.4. Normally, this lime color would probably come in at about like 0.25, 0.25, 0.3. And I've said 0.4, which is going to take that lime green and really boost it up into the maximum lime green that this display can show. So that's why I'm calling that a chroma boost because, uh, well, we turned up the saturation into a new wider gamut color space of OKLCH and then leveraged its ability uh, to represent higher chroma colors by passing in a higher chroma color. So again, in this one, we're converting from a lower, like a narrow gamut to a wide gamut color and then boosting the chroma inside of there. Super duper cool stuff. Okay, so here's another one. We got reliably lighten. So you can lighten in HSL with the L channel if you want. You could lighten in a couple of other ways, but I'm going to lighten this blue in OK Lab because look at that lighten I got here. I lightened it by 20, by 20%. So I make I made it like I increased the lightness, which is going to be towards white. And I think that that's a really nice blue. You'll find that if you try to lighten in HSL um, or other color spaces, you might get an undesirable result. And OK Lab is a very, very good space to color mix or in this case to lighten and color. Um, just a cool trick that you can take a hex color or whatever kind of color. You don't have to care what kind of color is in this variable. You're just converting it to OK Lab and lightening it inside of a space that's nice and reliable for that task. Super cool. Look at this one liner. I'm going to use this one all the time for hover effects and stuff. And conversely, you can reliably darken. So here I'm taking L and I'm subtracting 20. So I'm moving it closer to darkness, closer to a black color. And we can see I've got a darker red from this very, very vibrant bright red. Super cool. And yeah, just to note, as it says here, different color spaces will give different results. And that is something that we're just going to have to live with as we all still figure out color in this digital world right now. OK, here's another trick. You can just remove the hue entirely. So here we're passing in yellow, which is going to have a hue, saturation and lightness. And look, I passed the value of none. And so I'm like, I don't care what the hue was, but I do want to stay within the saturation and lightness of this color. And hue of none is going to essentially be zero. And that gets us into red. And so that's why we see a red color here. So you have the opportunity to completely remove color values or color channels by passing the none value in, which is a, a normal part of the syntax. And in this case, this is an absolute change like we were talking about earlier, absolute versus relative, because I didn't do any math on the variable. I just set a new value here. And that's just kind of a cool thing to think about. You can remove the hue. You can remove saturation. You could remove lightness entirely from a converted color in relative color syntax. You could also just go grayscale. So here we take cyan. We were like, hey, I like the lightness and the hue, um, but I want no chroma. And then we convert it to a nice little light gray that's in the same brightness and vibrancy visually that your eye has between the cyan and this gray. It's just lacking chroma entirely, uh, which is kind of cool. So you can go grayscale uh, any color that you want with just a little bit of relative color syntax. You can find a complementary color, which is kind of what we did in this example up here. But this one's much more explicit where um, we're just calling it out as a feature. And so we're taking orange, we're rotating the hue um, 180 degrees. And that's going to give us blue, right? So we're getting the complementary color. We could change this to yellow and we'd get purple, you know, et cetera. So if you know the color wheel and you want um, a complementary color, an analogous color, things like that, you can rotate the hue here, keep the saturation and lightness and make really nice palettes this way. So kind of cool. And you can invert colors. So this also depends on the color space and the strategy of what you're going to invert. But here I'm using RGB and I'm inverting each of the R, G and B channels by taking one and subtracting their current value. So this is um, the, the strategy that you can use to invert colors in RGB. Look, we kind of get the complementary here, but really it's an inverted color. Um, just kind of a cool technique. You'll need to employ a different strategy if you're using OKLab OK or OKLCH, um, but still the opportunity to invert the, the values of each of the variables here is there for you, which is kind of cool. All right. You can also, with the syntax, mix and match. So look at this. I'm making a color from yellow and RGB, and then I'm passing the alpha as the R channel, the B variable as the G value. Oh, this is really hard. The Wait, the B as the G, the G is the B, and the red as the alpha. <laughs> Look, it makes this pink color. So you can mix and match them like this. You don't have to put them back in order. Those variables are there for you to, you, you to use in the channels as you see fit, which is also kind of cool that you can do this. You can repeat one of those variables over and over again. 
So here I'm just taking a variable, um, making hot pink into RGB, and then just repeating G over and over again, which is going to give me a gray color because this, you know, this is going to be 80, 80, 80 or something like that. So you get a nice uh, gray color out of it. But that's just kind of cool. The syntax works like that. You can mix and match and you can repeat the variables. You could even add variables together if you wanted to. And our last example is a gotcha with the color function. So notice we're using the color function from here. Now, normally the first parameter that you'd pass in the color function is the color space that you want to make the color in. But with the relative color syntax, that comes after the from keyword and the color that gets passed in. So that's why I'm noting it here as a gotcha is you might have expected to say color, open parentheses, display P3 from yellow, you know, RGB but that's not how the syntax works. The syntax wants to know the from color before you start defining the rest of the color value. And that is it for all of the different demos with relative color syntax. I'm super duper excited about this. You can you can take this syntax and build really, really incredible things. I have a prototype where, um, well, here, I'll just show you the prototype. All right, so here's my code pen. This is open props kind of prototyping the ability to use relative color syntax to define many different well balanced palettes, all with one definition of color. And then we're just changing the hue for each of these and getting an entirely new palette. So again, this is one definition. This is 50. Look, here they are 15 color variables that all I do is change the hue. See how it says from color base. So I'm going to pass some sort of color base and then just build an entirely new set from it. So I can pass a hex color here. This could be a brand color. Maybe it's just a, a blue that you really, really like. And it will build out a really light version all the way to a really dark version of those colors for you. And um, it's super duper handy. These values that I've typed in here are hand created. Um, you could kind of theoretically, um, mathematically generate these if you like. Um, I just found that these were very balanced across all these different hues. And the other cool thing about this is I can also make a grayscale version of all these and tint each of those. So look, I have a hueless gray palette where um, obviously there's no hue passed in, but then I have this warm one where I pass in a little bit of chroma that's maybe in an orange or a reddish tint, and I can get a warm gray and get these sort of clay colors out of it. And I can also pass in a blue tint and get a cool gray. And so you have the ability to make this even more blue or less blue, no hue, some hue. It's really, really powerful stuff. So that is all for relative color syntax. I hope you enjoyed this GUI challenge. Check out the demo page and get ready to modify your colors with this awesome destructuring syntax. And I'll see you on the next GUI challenge.